Hello, this is Martin Patella for the Life Enthusiast podcast. And today I have the distinct pleasure and honor to be visiting with Richard Presser, the CEO of Magic Dicol, which is the company that distributes Nanosoma, and which is also known as uh, um, Metadicol. At least that's the uh, main ingredient. And we have been uh, now, well, I personally have been with this now for about six months, and I have been having and enjoying both subtle and profound personal changes. So we'll dive into that here today. Richard Presser, Dr. Richard Presser, welcome. Martin, thank you. Thank you for inviting me. And uh, firstly, let me say thank you to you for how you have embraced Nanosoma and helped to get it out into the world. My my vision for this product is that uh, perhaps in the 10 year time frame, when people truly understand this product, everybody in the world will use it. And I thank you for the efforts you've been making to share it with people on a very broad basis. Very exciting. Yeah, you know, Richard, you may be very prophetic here, because when you say that everybody in the world will be using it, the dark vision that I could embrace is that only the remaining living will be here remaining because they're using it. Um, I, I think you understand my view on all of that. I think indeed it could be that dark and you've touched on this. So I will open it up a little. Um, firstly, looking at nanosoma, I am now satisfied that the little particle in this product brought the blueprint of biological life to our planet. And uh, I have two uh, key pieces of data to support that. The first is that this is a lipid and you can't have biology without lipids. The lipids create the envelope within which biology can exist, whether it's a virus, a cell or us, our skins are lipids. And so they um, play this profound role, but they had to come before biology because without the lipids to form the envelope, there is no biology. So we certainly know it's older than biology. And then uh, earlier this year, we had a Zoom call and one of the participants was a woman called Lorraine Mill, who's a fellow Aussie. Um, she describes herself as a master intuitive. She started out as a medical intuitive and has gone way beyond that. So in fact, i took her words and edited it into a video, but she wasn't willing to, for me to share it because, you know, she wasn't dressed for the occasion. I've now got a still photograph from her. I'll put that out shortly. It's profound. And she describes what this is doing in the body, including correcting the DNA because she could witness it. Yeah. But at the end, she quietly says, this particle does not come from here. Mm -hmm. And yes. I'm satisfied that's true. So uh, on a broad basis, this little particle brought the blueprint of life here and is now emerging in the middle of the fallout from these jabs or injections. They cannot be vaccinations. And this, in my opinion, is a psyop of the first order. Uh, and it's a eugenics exercise. And this is what you're referring to on a level. Um, people who simply get the jab will probably not be with us certainly in five years and more than likely in only two or less. And it's that dark. Yes. Well, I wanted to put it in my own words in this way that the bilipid layer represents the um, sac within which the guts of every cell are contained. So without that sac, there is no separation of one cell from another. So even a single cell organism requires this particular sac to contain itself. And that of course is extended into every more complex cell. Each cell is a little entity that has a layer. And, and Bruce Lipton was the most brilliant man who described that the DNA in the nucleus is like the testicles or the gonads of the cell, whereas the cell itself, the, the cell membrane of the cell is actually like the brain because it's the cell that allows ingress or 
digress. Well, in, input yes. and output, stuff to get in or out of a cell. And there are these little gates, and they're called receptor sites. And these gates are either opening or not opening, like a relay in a specific situation. And if that is not working correctly, nutrition doesn't get in, toxins don't get out, and the functioning of the organism is just inadequate. Hence, when Raghu, the inventor of this, speaks of uh, receptor site regulation, he is onto something. You're absolutely right. This is great. This is key. And in, in my view, and in Raghu's view, when Bruce Lipton finally connects with this product, he'll be blown away because he will understand it exactly. So in truth, it's, it's managing, from what I can tell, all of the receptor sites. It's like the key to the functioning of our bodies that we didn't know was missing until it mm -hmm. showed up. In truth, it was there forever, uh, whispering to our bodies, documented in its more complete form, you know, in the Rig Veda of 5600 BC or wherever it was. And um, um, it effectively got removed along with all polycosinol from our food when it got refined. And you know, in my opinion, it's no accident that it's emerging as these uh, jabs are being implemented in the world. To be honest, I thought it was about stopping the virus. Well, that's how naive I am. The plan was never to do that. It was to deal with this jab. And on a level, what we are seeing is the end of a cycle set up to, create, to clear all darkness from all of creation. And so they are being allowed to do their damnedest. You see, once they get enough people jabbed, they think they've won. Because those that they don't kill off will have their DNA modified to suit the purposes of those who are driving all of this. But they, they haven't understood that the, the they are inside a bigger plan of the light. And all they are doing was actually anticipated before life began on this planet. It's why this particle does what it does. So anyone that uses this product will have all of this interference cleared, will have all of the receptor sites, as you describe, managed, protected. It's a key, it has a key role in the functioning of our bodies that disappeared. Mm. You might say by accident, but there are no accidents in anything, in my opinion. And it's emerging now as this um, um, scamdemic has been dealt with, supposedly, by these jabs. Yeah. You would almost think that the timing of the releases is somehow orchestrated from a higher level, right? Oh, I don't think it's some maybe. Yeah, I know. But so here's an interesting thing. When I think of metaphors, I always try to come up with a metaphor. I'm thinking that the nanosoma is acting as if it were a conductor of an orchestra. Absolutely. This, this particle is conscious and intelligent. Of that, I have no doubt. I have a, um, a very dear, a deeply spiritual, deeply skilled energy healer friend in uh, North Carolina who actually is the VP of Magic Dicol in the US. She's a silent player. Uh, by and large, but uh, A, she's able to, um, I would describe her as a multi-dimensional um, being, uh, um, but, uh, you know, she now uh, talks to the consciousness, consciousness of metadicol, as she calls it, which is the development name of the product, um, and it's identical. Nanosoma and metadicol are the same thing, just different, different names. One's a marketing name, one's a development name. Um, but, uh, yeah, Becky talks to Metadiacal and she tells me, you really should talk to it. <laughs> she knows I can do these things. Very good. Uh, so it, there is a plan here that's older than life on this planet. And mm -hmm. this little particle has a key role to play in mm -hmm. it. And, and I, I've said it before, I'm just humbled that, um, mm -hmm. you know, it has come to me to help to spread in the world on a level. I understand why, but nevertheless, you know, I see it as a profound responsibility and, and a very humbling responsibility and, and opportunity to yeah. do what I can do to spread it. Yeah, your words echo in my mind with the word anthrop 
Sophie, anthroposoph, anthroposophy. Oh my God, it's not coming out well. Um, anyway, Rudolf Steiner. Yes, I and know his you're thinking about. and his uh, speculation and his uh, talks about Armand and Lucifer and the, the energies that set up these uh, concepts and where we're headed with this. Mm. Yes, I. I mean, he was a profound man who contributed enormous things. Um, you know, I think he got uh, uh, waylaid and sidetracked by many who apparently were aligned with him. But let's not get lost in Steiner. He he brought an enormous contribution, mm. and and I think his understandings on a level were very, very uh, uh, accurate. I, I don't get too caught in the the persona, let's put it that way, of uh, ha the representatives, because, you know, my my own personal work and journey has taken me way, way beyond that uh, to an understanding and in some ways a, a, a clearing outside of this um, temporal world um, that really goes beyond those identities, let's put it that way. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, I, I, I look at that with, with interest, um, but not with great engagement. Yeah. Um, and, uh, but he made an enormous contribution on many levels and the world should be very grateful for that man. Again, he's been somewhat demonized and sidelined, of course, uh, but his contribution has been very special. Yeah. Okay, well, so that's the philosophical end of things. On practical side of things, I am truly excited to, uh, to see that we are hopefully at the end of the first cycle of the existence of this business where we have gone through two crises already. First, the crisis of delivery, then the crisis of uh, quality of the sprayers. But I think it's mainly behind us, right? Well, I hope so. Um, I I can't guarantee any of it, and I apologise to any and all of you that have suffered along with our uh, trials and tribulations. Um, this is a, a pretty new business. I opened the store for the US business in November last year, and um, you know I bottled. Uh, I think 350 litres of product. I'm now bottling it by uh, the 2,000 litres at a time, pretty much. I'm shipping in two tonnes of liquid at a time to bottle, uh, and it's just going to keep growing. So we've had lots of growing pains. We've screwed some things up. And again, I apologise to everybody that's been impacted. Um, um, the supply issue, I... I thought we'd got on top of, but uh, growth of demand, you know, got ahead of me again. Um, I think we've got a handle on it, but I'd make no promises because, you know, in terms of the total US and Canadian population, our volume is very small. Mm -hmm. So as it spreads, you know, one of the things I have understood is um, one person will tell 10. Originally, it came from Rogers Astrologer a decade ago or more. And uh, the other was from the early work in Malaysia, where it was first released in 2015, and it got born out in the field. One person tells 10 on balance. So you only have to do that a couple of times. You don't need any marketing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, no, the product does sell itself. Although, it does. Uh, we should address this. So I have some people who call me on day three and say, I am astounded. I have more energy. I'm more stable. I sleep better. In fact, I wake up bursting into song. And then yes. I have another person who says, I'm now on my second or third bottle, and I cannot say that I'm feeling any different. Or I have yep. a guy who writes to me saying, well, I did one bottle and it didn't change my diabetes uh, symptoms any. And uh, so I gave the rest to my wife and uh, that's that. And so, I, of course, I say, well, you know, it took three bottles for me before it fired up. I just happened to have used up three bottles inside of four weeks. All, of those, all of those happen and more. Um, I would add to that. You know, people say, 
Oh, you know, probably the worst I can think of. Oh, it tastes like vomit. I don't want to go near it. Um, and so the thing I say to people is um, there is a journey with this product. Again, it, when people truly understand it, they will not look at it through the lens of um, allopathic medicine. It would be the best way to describe it. Looking for a point solution. I have these symptoms that I know about. And I want it fixed within two days of beginning to use the product. You know, um, that may or may not happen. I mean, I what I have seen is um, people who've got extreme blood pressure will see it normalized in hours. There is an example we had of a woman who had uh, extreme blood sugar levels and it had them since about the age of six I don't know why. I've never investigated why. And, I, and she was in her 50s. I think she may have lost a leg along the way. But she had, uh, and these, no, I, you know, I'm no medical person on any level, let's be clear. The numbers she talked about was her blood sugars in, uh, I think, 530 or something, which meant nothing to me. But Raghu said, my God, that's coma territory. Yeah, that's, that's uh, terminal. Yes. So she sprayed five sprays in her mouth in the evening, went to bed, got up in the morning, and her blood sugar was 90. She has never seen it at 90 in her life. Mm -hmm. And so, um, but if someone's got, you know, just a little bit of ele elevated blood sugar, it could take three months. The thing to get is there's a triage. There is, this is conscious and intelligent. And when you put nanosoma in your body, the body and nanosoma conduct a triage. What's life-threatening? Okay, we'll work on that first. And you may not know about it. You might be within a week of having a heart attack. And we know most heart issues we don't have much awareness of until it manifests in a pretty serious way, unless we've had some tests done. So you don't know what's going on. And so, but the body does, especially in the presence of this godfather particle, as Raghu describes it. He says, you know, this comes into the body and it says to the cell, hey, listen, I taught you two million or billion years ago how you should be working. You're not doing it. Get on with it. <laughs> oh. And so people, uh, you know, they may, the thing that's life-threatening, they may be aware of or they may not. And you don't know what the priorities are. So there's a journey that's begun. And if, you know, if you do have pretty good nutrition, there's a good chance that the energy transfer into your cell is working relatively well. So you may not experience much. But when, when the mitochondria into your cells are not working very well, it's one of the first things that gets fixed, which supplies energy and nutrition into the cells. And this is why when many people say, my God, the, almost the moment I started to use it, I had this incredible boost of energy. It's because the mitochondria are repaired, which transport uh, energy and nutrition into the cells. So these things happen. Um, and, uh, and some people don't experience much. And as I said, you know, you can have people who say, oh, you know, I'm not seeing anything. So I gave it to my wife because they haven't understood what they're playing with and they haven't understood what this is doing. Um, and, you know, with time, that lack of awareness will go away, which is why I say, you know, when people truly understand this product, that, that really the, when you use this product, illness and disease and aging will not be part of the human experience, not because nanosoma is fixing anything. It doesn't. It doesn't cure or treat anything. It's simply triggering the body to operate at its optimum and in a way that we never understood was possible until this showed up. So, you know, it's like the key to the functioning of our body, as I said, that's, that's gone missing. And so some people experience one thing, some people experience another, um, you know, as I said, some people can experience the most common flavor reaction from uh, people if they have one is bitter or coconut or soapy or, you know, the last one I mentioned was vomit, which is not common, but it can happen. And people don't understand that it's about their body because when you use it uh, for a while and for a while can be, you know, a couple of weeks or, 
or six months, depending on what's happening with your body, it tastes like water. Energy, energized water is how I would describe it mm. today. But you have people who, you know, they have no, it has no flavor from the beginning. Right. Kerry, Cass Kerry Cassidy was an example. You know, she sent me an email saying I started using the spray. No, no taste for me. And I said, well, that's a good sign. <laughs> You've got some fundamental balance in place. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good. Well, I just want to uh, summarize it in this way that uh, please understand that the, um, the product may take a while to manifest. And just because you're not having a dramatic shift in your symptoms, doesn't mean that it's not doing anything. It just means that you haven't taken enough yet, which is, of course, the perfect marketing ploy, really, right? <laughs> the thing, uh, you know, Rug has gone through this a lot because he's been working for over 10 years and he's had people uh, who said these sorts of things and, you know, where it's mattered, he said, sent them off to get blood test results done uh, and do some before and after comparisons. Lo and behold, their blood markers have normalized. And, and so this is a very, you know, it's only one of many tests you can do, but it's a good indicator that the body's systems are being normalized by this and how it's manifest in terms of the symptoms of dis-ease, as I would describe it, which really, you know, we've been taught to treat all these things as single points of illness, if you will, when really they're just a reflection of the underlying um, malfunction of our bodies. Um, you know, when you take that broader view and understand it and recognize that if you use it for, you know, a bunch of years, you'll probably stabilize with a, with a biological age of about 35 for as long as you want to stay on the planet. Hey, that's not such a bad deal. And that works for me, I tell you. You know, okay. Ragu... Ragu is now 70. He's been using it for probably 11 years. Uh, two years ago, his measured biological age was 51. It's now 48. All right. His, his biological clock's running backwards. And it's not just Ragu that this will happen to. It's, it's all of us. And it's, mm. you know, in fact, it's part of his patterns, what it's doing to the telomerase. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, this is to be expected. It's, it, in a way, it was the promise of life on this planet. We just didn't know how it would come. And it was all part of a much bigger plan. And here we are living out the crescendo, the climax of the game of the dark on this planet. They thought they could come here and dominate humanity and in so doing survive in creation. Well, guess what? They fell into a trap that was even smarter than them. Mm. That's what we're living through. So I'm actually a a total optimist about the outcomes. I don't know what the journey will be like to get there. You know, you need to choose what's yours to do along the way. And you should expect that those many of those people that are not aware probably won't be with us in a few short years. Speaking of not be with us. So uh, if, uh, if, or when Ragu gives up his physical body, is the business going to carry on? Well, you know, um, his plan um, would be uh, his plan is to live at least to, you know, 180 to 200. So <laughs> I'm not over. I'm not overly worried about it right now, unless he falls under a bus. But I don't expect that's his karma. Well, you know, that, is the, so. that is the distinct chance that he does fall under a bus. I'm, I'm just curious if if there is some kind of a succession planning in place. Uh, I don't know. I never asked him. I haven't worried about it because I I don't look at life on that level. You know, when you understand that uh, we have all chosen our life journey and life path before we incarnate, you know, all these people that are going to uh, leave the planet courtesy of these jabs chose it before they came. True. And so when you look at it like that, you don't operate quite in the same um, fear-based reaction that says, but what about if something happens to Ragu? Because I know he's not going anywhere. I know it was this man's mission to bring this to the planet. I know where he's walking. Okay, well, that's a lovely faith-based statement, which you may well be true. You could call it faith. Uh, it's not the word that I would use. Well, exactly. okay, inner knowing. That's better. All right. Well, let's run with that. Let's hope that 
you are <laughs> prophetic. <laughs> oh man. Okay. So um, there's this wonderful new development happening by the time this is on air. I'm hoping that the uh, uh, Metasomer product, the gel version of the Nanosoma is going to be out. Um, what can you say about that? Well, uh, simply put, if you think about nanosoma uh, and you understand it fully, you realize that its action on the on the skin is very powerful. You know, we've seen people with uh, psoriasis over eighty percent of their body cleared. We have seen people with all manner of skin afflictions see these things healed, and spraying water on the skin is not really the best way of uh, <laughs> of getting stuff on your skin it runs everywhere you know it's 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 messy and so in essence what the uh, gel the topical gel is um is basically uh, nanosoma processed further to um include um I, I think the only additional ingredient is an edible xanthan gum so you have a you have a gel that you apply to the skin that has the same efficacy as the spray, but much more convenient for that kind of application. And we will only be um, announcing it as a topical product. Product, but if you understand that everything that's in the product is is edible, you know there are other things you might do with it. Um, right. And so, so is this. Is this more concentrated or less concentrated or how is it? Same, same concentration. In fact, same efficacy, same concentration. Again, let's talk about concentration for a moment. Uh, people get caught in, in this. When Raghu started making this product, he started at 40 milligram product. And then he gradually be, worked his me. way. There would be 40 milligrams per month. Per, per mil. No, no, no. 40, 40 concentration, 40 milligram per mil milliliter of volume and and he, the the first product that i think he may have released was 10 milligram per mil the next was five and we are using two and a half milligram per mil i expect it'll be one milligram per mil in a year or two and if you understand that in large measure this is working at uh, homeopathic levels, all of this makes some sense. Mm. There are many other bits of this that I could go into, but um, simply a, a good way to look at it is we tend to think about concentration of chemicals because that's where we've come from. But if you think about what you know, five sprays in your mouth represents, it's about 10 uh, 10 to 50,000 times the number of particles as we have cells in our bodies. Right. Understand? Huge yeah. number of huge number of particles compared to the number of cells. Now, I'm not saying you only need one particle per cell. I don't think you do. You might need 20 or something, but not 10,000. And well, so... Just to say, I was getting more effect by taking 20 sprays in a day than five. Ah, well, there are two different issues. Um, there is a, a frequency of use and concentration. Mm. The concentration um, in the levels that we're playing with doesn't change things much at all, but usage does because particularly as you're going through the healing process, it's, it's um, you know, you're dealing with things that are effectively using up the product in a way. This is why if someone was dealing with the virus, five, five sprays every four hours is a good thing to do. If people have been jabbed, it's good to use it every four hours for, we recommend three days just to be sure. Um, there is a place for that. It's because in a way there's a consumption of the product happening. So, so usage, uh, you know, frequent usage is not the same thing as concentration. They might sound like they're overlapped and maybe they are slightly, but in essence, using it, you know, if you taking, taking uh, 30 sprays at one time versus taking five sprays six times a day is a different outcome. So oh, in fact, the five sprays a day, if I take one in the morning, one at noon, one at dinner, one at bedtime, and have a spare. It may, it may be. 
it may be. Um, but well, we should we should actually Pfizer. start a poll, people. Uh, those of you who are willing to experiment, if you're not lazy and like me, who <laughs> takes five sprays in the morning and gets on with his day, if you're willing, I would like you to try and compare and be in touch and let us know what you find. It's very interesting. You know, I've had some kinesiologists who say to me, you know, I've measured this, all I need is is one spray a day. Well, that's okay. That may be true. I, there are other people. Uh, there's a man who's also a, a wonderful kinesiologist. In fact, his testimonial is the first in my test documented testimonials, a guy called Howard Wallen, who, who lives in Chicago, 80-year-old, 80, 80 wonderful man. And, uh, you know, there have been times on his journey where he's used a bottle in a day because that's what his testing has told him to do. Hmm. Uh, is he wrong? I'm not saying he's wrong. Uh, I'm saying we don't fully understand all that's going on here. Um, but certainly all the experimentation that Raghu has done says that when you when you are effectively in a, a stable health situation or you're working with longer-term healing and health issues, five sprays once a day is enough and it's a good way to work. If you And it's also why we have the front-loading thing when you're getting started. You know, five sprays four times a day while you use up a bottle, five sprays twice a day till you use up a second. Again, this has come out of the testing that Raghu has done over a period of time. So um, it's not a box exactly. It's, it's a guide and some people feel drawn to use less. That's okay. One thing I will say is that... Um, uh, some experiments have been done in Switzerland with using different dosage amounts uh, across a whole range. And within a few hours, that all normalized. This stuff, um, it recycles itself in the body. So it goes in as an alcohol. Um, it gets oxidized, if you will, and becomes, uh, what does it become an acid, I guess. And then, but the body recycles it back. It gets, so it goes through this natural cycle as many things do in the body in a state of homeostasis these things in many cases get recycled that's why re vitamin c gets produced in the body when this is present mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because it's effectively part of the homeostasis process of the cells is to take oxidized vitamin c and convert it back but without this product in it doesn't happen yeah <laughs> speaking of ingredients somebody uh wrote to me saying, please explain the sugar to me, because there was the <laughs> word sucrose in the yes. ingredients. Yes. And yeah. so I said, well, yeah, but this is uh, sucrose, as in sugar, laurel sulfate, something which actually is an emulsifier. And I'm saying, well, this is the brilliance of the design. Uh, the ordinary polycosanol is not micronized and is not water soluble. Correct. Right. Exactly. And so, and okay, so, so speaking of ingredients, so that this new metasomer is applied topically. So should I expect that the most use, the useful way would be to what? To put it all over my face to deal with, I don't know what, signs of aging? You can. Uh, down, or, down, down the track, the cream will be a better option for that, but the gel will work. Uh, you can put it all over your face. You can put it on. If you have a, uh, if you have a cut, for example, um, people that have used the spray or the gel in whichever form on, on something like that, it, you know, it, it heals up incredibly quickly. Uh -huh. You know, within a day, you, you would see healing that you would only normally see in a week or two. Uh, a, there's no infection. B, this stuff is triggering the production of stem cells in the in the wound. It heals incredibly quickly. Again, okay. this is entirely understood. Uh, burns, incredibly effective. Um, uh, I mentioned psoriasis, eczema, um, um, uh, acne. These things mm. get transformed by the use of of this product, and the right. gel is the is the practical. Uh, version of this thing that you can find. Many people have told me this is the best hemorrhoid cream they've ever struck. All right. The gel or the, the future thing? The gel. The gel. Because you also mentioned lotion or cream, right? 
the cream is really a facial cream. It's a it's a really a high quality um, uh, facial cream is its primary focus. Okay. So Do you again, have a target release date for that? Um, I'm hopeful in a couple of months in in the US. It's dragging its feet. I just had a conversation an hour or so ago with a lawyer who needs to, um, you know, position the the um, evidence that we have that it's perfectly safe to use we know but you have to document these things in a in a formal way and give people access to it and okay. he's busy with other things so i called him and kick him i know him <laughs> he's so, a good man so this has to be tested on humans because we just don't like to um, waste it on rats yes <laughs> we don't have to do any of that oh i this know stuff that. was oh. done 10 th this any of that kind of work was done 10 years ago. Uh -huh. In a way, these products are old products. But, uh, yeah, we need human rats to test it on by, like you and me, you know. We'll be uh, good rats for it. Uh, I will tell you, uh, I have yet to uh, – our focus is the gel, but, uh, but I've yet to um, – share this with a woman who is not in the pharma, in the in the cosmetics industry who doesn't love it i have had three women so far who didn't like the cream okay and i, and I realized they're all in the cosmetics industry yeah well we're we're in a terrible situation here because just having said this what we did is going to create a huge problem for me because I'll be having to answer the calls. Or, but when are you getting the lotion? So the gel, the gel will be in the store um, next week, I expect. Okay. Um, so that's we, we're speaking in September of 2021. We we are indeed, and so the week beginning, whatever that will be, um, uh, the. Um, yeah, I I, I reckon. Uh, It'll be available uh, in the store from the beginning of the week after next. So where are you? That's well, we are on the third September. today. Yeah, yeah, mid mid September. I may open the store a day or two ahead okay. for for pre order, okay. but um, you know, late in September we'll have uh, right. a good a good stock. I will say, you know, we've we've right. only bottled a quarter of a ton off the bat. So, yeah. you know, Enough it may said. not stick around long. So how do we justify the 50% uh, uh, premium on the price? Uh, well, it's a different product to begin with. Secondly, it's more expensive to make. As I mentioned, it's um, made uh, by taking the spray and, and, re and processing it further. So it's a more expensive product to make. Um, and and also it's uh, you know it's not something that you will use every day the way we use the spray so it, it has a different positioning in 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 the market. All right. All right. So to to position it straight out. So this is something you want to have in your bathroom shelf, but you won't necessarily need to use it every day. Correct. You know, if um, you can use it every day if you wish, but you don't need to. Uh, how I tend to use it if is if I have a you know some issue going on on my skin I will apply it um, it's also I, one of the things that people have discovered is that uh, um, the products in in general are, are generally very good for pain relief so applying the gel for pain relief and to promote say the healing of a of a damaged knee and all these kind of things are, are good things to use it for. Um, the base practice, in my opinion, is you know five sprays once a day in your mouth of the spray as an underpinning for everything else you do, mm -hmm. and then the gel is um, additional to that. So if someone's dealing with with acne or eczema or psoriasis, then clearly you will use it quite a lot. Um, you know, for, for that whilst it exists. Um, and so in that case, you will use quite a lot of it. But in general, uh, I don't see it as being something that people will use every day unless they have a need to. All right. And so the lotion, don't call me before the beginning of 2022. That's, that's a good line in the sand. Okay. If, if we do better than that, treat it as a bonus. <laughs> okay, yeah. we'll we'll let you know if we have managed to get ahead of the deadline. Yeah.
Okay. So that's really the that really is the gel. It's it's taking the spray and it's turning it into a topical, easy to apply um, uh, gel. Gel is the perfect word for it because that's what it is. Yeah, it sticks um, to the surface. It does. It does, and you you know spread it out. I mean, it's it's a water based. Uh, product just like nanosoma is so there's no oil in it and so it gets absorbed into the skin very quickly and easily you rub it on and it's gone sounds great um i have a few ideas how to test it so we will put it to a test i'll try and do good. a few visuals very good yes. I, i look forward to that I, you know we, we uh uh we have quite a lot of feedback because rago has been using it and testing it's in his large um body of testimonials there's 60 pages of testimonials include include some gel use <clears throat> but really think about it as being nanosoma in a gel form that you can apply topically simply and easily you know at uh, at your as you require it simply mm -hmm. well i look forward to hearing from our listeners and followers with their stories we have already a good number of them you can find them on the product page and of course we have been sending out the uh, commonly shared list of of uh, testimonials that you're referring to that's usually sent by our newsletter because we don't dare cool. to put them on our website yeah uh, understand fact, i think i think the stories that we could tell would uh, probably not not uh, withstand the scrutiny of the regulators well i think um You know, when people are simply sharing their testimonials, that's fine. Um, just from a, a business perspective, one of the problems that the multi-level marketing people got into with testimonials is, you know, the people that were sharing them were being effectively paid to tell good stories. And so that's where they got in, into a problem um, legally. We don't have those issues because people are buying the product and using it for their own benefit and, and sharing their story. You're allowed to do that. That's not a problem. All right. Let's hope that that statement holds. There are lots and lots of testimonials on Amazon if you go looking. I mean, I, I won't use Amazon for many reasons. Um, All right. Uh, probably not ever. Um, but... Um, Uh, you know, there are lots of test product testimonials up there. There's a bit of a fear in the nutritional supplement industry about it because uh, of the MLM experience. And so people have tended to extrapolate it into this. Well, the, the biggest concept. challenge that I have is that uh, under the uh, FDA rules, we are allowed to make a structure or a function claim, but not a medical claim. So I could say something like... Um, Uh, metadicol supports healthy heart function or healthy metabolic function because it's a statement of fact. But I couldn't say it lowers blood pressure because that's a medical condition. Yeah, no, I understand. I am very careful to claim nothing. Yes. Yeah, so and, we don't, and we don't need to, you see. Because people share their experience and it's like this ground swell. Humanity deserves this product and humanity is waking up to this product. We're just opening a few doors and the right people grab it and run like you have. Mm, and, and so we don't need to make claims. If anything, I'm actually reducing the things that I put on the products. Uh, and an example for this is the term nutraceutical which is a very kosher word in the US. It's been tested legally and defended for natural supplements, <clears throat> but it's a no-no word in the UK and Europe, which I found out the hard way. <laughs> I couldn't open a bank account in the UK. I said, What? what's going on here? And then I did some homework and I'm taking the word nutraceutical off everywhere so okay. that it doesn't trigger these reactions again right. the word the word has a different meaning in those countries it's not been defined and defended as a uh -huh. as a term as it has in the us so there are all these things you walk into so i'm backing these things off as we go forward it's not going to affect the at the rollout of the product in any way all right speaking of international so um as of 
our conversation right now, your European store, the German-based EU, is up and running, yes? Yes, it is. Yep. Fantastic. Yep. And so the Australian store is also open? It's open. The Australian store was actually the first one that I opened. I have closed it once or twice along the way. It's open, and but we're also out of product. <laughs> but that will be fixed. Uh, we expect a bottle next week. I will be moving it from um, backyard supply, as we were doing here originally out of my office and now out of my friend John's office when we get supply, and it'll be in a fulfillment centre. All right. Um, so Going it'll be industrial. Formal. We are. Yeah. We are. We did it in the US out, out of the gate because we had to. Yeah. Um, and we are, we are graduating to that here in Australia this month. So that's an exciting step forward. Wonderful. And so the UK is uh, some months away or? It's weeks away. The constraint is bottles. Um, you know, my <laughs> rugger's joke is they spent too long in India. <laughs> they, they caught the lethargy. You know, things seem to take forever to make happen in, in the UK. And so, you know, I was organising the people that are bottling it for me are organizing all the packaging and the bottling and the bottles were on minimum eight weeks lead time. They went to a second supplier to get it that, that close. I'm trying to fix that for the longer term, but basically that's the constraint. If I could get bottles, I could get it bottled. I could get it in the warehouse. We could get going, but without bottles, I can't do anything. And so, are you not able to ship the German product into UK? Uh, I don't want to do that for a number of reasons. Okay, um, never mind. Y you you have different regulations in every little space around these kind of products. <clears throat> so what you put on a label in Europe is different. Even already, what you put on a label in the UK is different. I don't want to get muddied up with any of those kinds of issues. Okay. Uh, I don't want to be importing a bottled product into the UK or in general, ongoingly on any scale anywhere. My model is to buy the bulk out of Switzerland and ship it to the market and bottle it there, whether it be me or somebody that I'm working with. Yeah. Um, so, for example, in South Africa, I'm working with some people where, who will put it in a bottle themselves and I'll just supply them bulk product. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm, I'm talking to someone in Singapore who will spread it across large parts of Southeast Asia. Mm -hmm. You know, she's, she's a powerhouse who understands this space. Um, yeah. Interestingly and intriguingly, her ancestry is also um, um, Tamil Nadu, which is where uh, Raghu comes from. Uh -huh. So even though she was, she was born in Singapore, she speaks Tamil. They can, they speak Tamil together. It's very funny. <laughs> funny, funny. Okay. So that's that part of the happened. expansion. Uh, I have been getting calls and orders from all over the world, and I keep telling them, wait, wait, wait. So... There will be links uh, in the show notes where you can go to order directly. Perfect. I don't necessarily want to be shipping orders from our U.S. warehouse to wherever you are in the world because it's really a, uh, an experience. That's a good word. Leave it at that. <laughs> Yes, it, okay. it is. And, uh, you know, with time, my if the vision is that this be in the hands of everybody in the world, and uh, I said 10 years, Rugger's astrologer said two, and I said, oh, my God, I can't imagine how that can happen. Um, and so we just deal with it. But uh, how this will be in the world, you know, I just don't know. If it's available to everybody, we're going to become like Coca-Cola bottles around the world in a sense. I don't know how that's going to happen or how it will be. Mm -hmm. um, and one of the big issues for that on, on a broader scale is um, you really need to be able to produce the product in, in, you know, in those places, which means an integrated plant and we need water. We need pristine water. Where do you get the water from for this? Uh, the way I look at it is, if the plan is for this to be available in that way across the world, then the water will be there. We just have to find it. I don't know what it looks like yet, but Green the answer land. will be Here there. We come. <laughs> Indeed. All right. Um, have I forgotten something? Not that I can think of. All right. Okay, dear listeners, this is uh, 
Martin Petella for Life Enthusiast and Dr. Richard Presser for Magic Die Call. We are at life-enthusiast.com and we are restoring vitality to you and to the planet. It's been our motto since our opening back in 25 years ago. Fantastic. Thank you for being with us. Thank you. Thank you, man.